It is really coming down to the wire tonight in the trial that is both captivating and polarizing America. The defense rested today and very soon the jury of six women will decide whether George Zimmerman will go free or spend the rest of his life in prison, perhaps. Whatever they decide is likely to enrage millions of Americans. Police in Florida are bracing for the worst. And ABC's Matt Gutman is on the story. Have you made a decision as to whether or not you want to testify in the case? I, I object to that question. I think that's... Mr. The tensions boiled over in court today as Judge Deborah Nelson demanded that George Zimmerman answer the question on everyone's minds for months. Will he finally take the stand in his own murder trial? Mr. Zimmerman, have you made a decision as to whether or not you want to testify in this case? No, not at this time. Okay. Later in the day, she asked again. Finally, he gave his answer. And what is your decision, sir? A after consulting with counsel not to testify your own. He didn't testify, but it was the most he'd spoken in court in the 21 days since this contentious trial began. And with that, the defense rested its case. Seemingly confident, it had established to the six-person all-female jury that when the former neighborhood watchman shot and killed 17-year-old Trayvon Martin in February 2012, it was an act of self-defense. The jury's already heard him give his version of events, right? So it doesn't make a lot of sense for him to get on the witness stand. The jury's not going to hold it against him uh, if he doesn't. In a dramatic day in court, the prosecution presented a mannequin sure during the questioning of defense witness Dennis Root, a law enforcement officer. Were you aware that the defendant described to his best friend that um, when he slid down, the defendant slid down, that uh, Trayvon Martin was up around his armpits? Were you aware of that? No, I've not heard that. No, sure. Curious jurors and even the defense team craned their necks to see. Some even stood up. Okay, well, where would the gun be now? Now the gun would be um, behind your left leg. Okay. Then the defense had its turn at show and tell. May I use your dog for a moment? Of course. The defense claimed Zimmerman shot Martin in self-defense as the 17-year-old pounded his head into the pavement. Were the injuries on Mr. Zimmerman's back of his head consistent with someone doing this on cement? I, I don't think so. How about this? How about somebody resisting the attempt, the injuries, the two lacerations? Could that have come from cement? If somebody was resisting me pushing down like I, this? I, I believe so. It was one of many theatrical moments in a trial that has captivated the nation for weeks. The defense scored an early victory when it grilled the prosecution's star witness, Rachel Gentel, a friend of Martin's who was on the phone with him just moments before he was shot. He looked like a creepy ass cracker. She testified that Martin was scared that night, but defense attorney Don West went after her credibility. For all you know, Trayvon Martin smashing George Zimmerman in the face is what you actually heard. What? Yeah, just earlier today. No. Then another blow for the prosecution. Lead investigator Chris Serino, whose testimony seemed to further bolster the defense's oh, case, stated that Zimmerman's story about the incident that night was now remarkably consistent. Overall, was there anything else in this case where you got the insight that he might be a pathological liar? No. But it was a case not without gaffes, notably from defense attorney Don West, whose opening argument began, improbably enough, with a joke. Knock, knock. Who's there? George Zimmerman. George Zimmerman, who? <laughs> All right, good. You're on the jury. And then he drew criticism for that relentless cross-examination of Martin's friend, Rachel Jantel. That's funny. Even exposing her limited literacy. Can you read any of the words on it? I don't understand. Um, curses. I don't read curses. The day after that appearance, this selfie went viral. West posing with his daughters, one of whom posted the snapshot to Instagram, along with the caption, we beat stupidity celebration cones with the hashtag, daddy killed it. West later apologized for an incident that triggered outrage, a motion from the prosecution for an inquiry, and West said death threats to his family. The tension, the long hours, apparently taking their toll on the attorneys. On Tuesday night, a procedural hearing about this 3D animation turned into a marathon, eight-hour hearing. The attorneys attacking each other look closely. Defense attorney Mark O'Mara almost physically restraining West. And so have I.
not be able to prepare or get my witnesses gathered for tomorrow, and I can't do it tonight. I'll see you uh, at I'm not physically able to keep up this pace much longer. It's 10 o'clock at night. We started this morning. We've had full days every day. Weekends, depositions at night. Thank you. The prosecution's strategy was to hammer away at Zimmerman's credibility, highlighting any inconsistencies during the trial. There are two people involved here. One of them's dead and one of them's a liar. And one of the crucial questions at stake, who was heard yelling for help on the various 911 calls from the night of the shooting? Do you know whose voice that is uh, in the background screaming? Yes, definitely, it's Georgie. The defense called a parade of witnesses, friends of George Zimmerman, to the stand. All of them said they could make out the same voice. I thought it was George. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind that is George Zimmerman. And I wish to God I did not have that ability to understand that. But the jury also heard emotional testimony from Trayvon Martin's parents who disagreed. Who do you recognize that to be, man? Trayvon Benjamin Martin. I was listening to my son's last cry for help. Um, I was listening to his life being taken. Um, and I was coming, trying to uh, come to grips that um, Trayvon was here no more. Closing arguments in the trial will begin tomorrow, and then the case will go to the jury. Closing arguments are going to be the key to this trial. This trial is all about summation and putting that picture in front of the jury. Regardless what they decide, Sanford Police Chief Cecil Smith is preparing for a potentially hostile response from the community. What percentage of your police force is going to be ready in anticipation of whatever happens? Our entire police department. Everybody. There's, there's no vacations, there's no furloughs, unless you're, uh, you're off sick and you have to be physically off sick, you will be uh, working at some point. Raise your voice. And not your hands. We need to stand together as one. No cuffs, no guns. And it's not just Sanford that's bracing for the worst. In Broward County, Florida, the sheriff's office releasing this PSA trying to encourage residents to stay peaceful in the event of any verdict. No need to act up. And if the verdict does go his way, Zimmerman, for one, is hoping that everyone will follow that advice. He's very worried about his safety, personal safety going forward because those same people who portended the fear and hatred um, leading up to this trial probably are not going to accept an acquittal. I'm Matt Gutman for Nightline, ABC News in Sanford, Florida.